The glossopharyngeal nerve, known as the ninth cranial nerve, is a mixed nerve that carries afferent sensory and efferent motor information. It exits the brainstem out from the sides of the upper medulla, just rostral to the vagus nerve. The motor division of the glossopharyngeal nerve is derived from the basal plate of the embryonic medulla oblanata, while the sensory division originates from the cranial neural crest. Structure From the anterior portion of the medulla oblanata, the glossopharyngeal nerve passes laterally across or below the flocculus, and leaves the skull through the central part of the jugular foramen. From the superior and inferior ganglia and jugular foramen, it has its own sheath of dura mater. The inferior ganglion on the inferior surface of Petra's part of temporal is related with a triangular depression into which the aqueduct of cochlea opens. On the inferior side, the glossopharyngeal nerve is lateral and anterior to the vagus nerve and accessory nerve. In its passage through the foramen, the glossopharyngeal nerve passes between the internal jugular vein and internal carotid artery. It descends in front of the latter vessel and beneath the styloid process and the muscles connected with it, to the lower border of the stylopharyngeus. It then curves forward, forming an arch on the side of the neck and lying upon the stylopharyngeus and middle pharyngeal constrictor muscle. From there, it passes under cover of the euglossus muscle and is finally distributed to the palatine tonsil, the mucous membrane of the forces and base of the tongue, and the serous glands of the mouth. Equals branches equals, tympanic, stylopharyngeal, tensilla, nerve to carotid sinus, branches to the posterior third of tongue, lingual branches, a communicating branch to the vagus nerve. Note, the glossopharyngeal nerve contributes in the formation of the pharyngeal plexus along with the vagus nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve has five distinct general functions, branchial motor euro supplies the stylopharyngeus muscle. Visceral motor euro provides parasympathetic innervation of the parotid gland via the otic ganglion, visceral sensory euro carries visceral sensory information from the carotid sinus and carotid body. General sensory euro provides general sensory information from inner surface of the tympanic membrane, upper pharynx, and the posterior one-third of the tongue. Visceral afferent euro provides taste sensation from the posterior one-third of the tongue including circumvallate papillae. The glossopharyngeal nerve is noted above as a mixed nerve consisting of both sensory and motor nerve fibers. The sensory fibers' origin include the pharynx, middle ear, posterior one-third of the tongue, and the carotid body and sinus. These fibers terminate at the medulla oblanata. The motor fibers' origin is the medulla oblanata, and they terminate at the parotid salivary gland the glands of the posterior tongue, and the stylopharyngeus muscle. Equals overview of branchial motor component equals, the branchial motor component of CN9 provides voluntary control of the stylopharyngeus muscle, which elevates the pharynx during swallowing and speech. Origin and central course, the branchial motor component originates from the nucleus ambiguous in the reticular formation of the medulla rostral medulla. Fibers leaving the nucleus ambiguous travel anteriorly and laterally to exit the medulla, along with the other components of CN9, between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Intracranial course, upon emerging from the lateral aspect of the medulla the branchial motor component joins the other components of CN9 to exit the skull via the jugular foramen. The glossopharyngeal fibers travel just anterior to the cranial nerves X and 11, which also exit the skull via the jugular foramen. Extracranial course and final innervation, upon exiting the skull the branchial motor fibers descend deep to the temporal styloid process and wrap around the posterior border of the stylopharyngeus muscle before innervating it. Voluntary control of the stylopharyngeus muscle, signals for the voluntary movement of stylopharyngeus muscle originate in the premotor and motor cortex and pass via the cortical bulbar tract in the posterior limb of the internal capsule to synapse bilaterally on the ambiguous nuclei in the medulla. Equals overview of visceral motor component equals, parasympathetic component of the glossopharyngeal nerve that innervates the ipsilateral parotid gland. Origin and central course, 
the pregangionic nerve fibers originate in the inferior salivatory nucleus of the rostral medulla and travel anteriorly and laterally to exit the brainstem between the medullary olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle with the other components of CN9. Note, these neurons do not form a distinct nucleus visible on cross-section of the brainstem. The position indicated on the diagram is representative of the location of the cell bodies of these fibers. Intracranial course, upon emerging from the lateral aspect of the medulla, the visceral motor fibers join the other components of CN9 to enter the jugular foramen. Within the jugular foramen, there are two glossopharyngeal ganglia that contain nerve cell bodies that mediate general, visceral, and special sensation. The visceral motor fibers pass through both ganglia without synapsing and exit the inferior ganglion with CN9 general sensory fibers as the tympanic nerve. Before exiting the jugular foramen, the tympanic nerve enters the petrous portion of the temporal bone and descends via the inferior tympanic canaliculus to the tympanic cavity. Within the tympanic cavity the tympanic nerve forms a plexus on the surface of the promontory of the middle ear to provide general sensation. The visceral motor fibers pass through this plexus and merge to become the lesser petrizal nerve. The lesser petrizal nerve re-enters and travels through the temporal bone to emerge in the middle cranial fossa just lateral to the greater petrizal nerve. It then proceeds anteriorly to exit the skull via the foramen ovale along with the mandibular nerve component of CNV extracranial course and final innervations. Upon exiting the skull, the lesser petrizal nerve synapses in the otic ganglion which is suspended from the mandibular nerve immediately below the foramen ovale. Postganglionic fibers from the otic ganglion travel with the auricular temporal branch of CNV3 to enter the substance of the parotid gland. Hypothalamic influence, fibers from the hypothalamus and olfactory system project via the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus to influence the output of the inferior salivatory nucleus. Examples include, 1, dry mouth in response to fear. 2. Salivation in response to smelling food. Equals overview of visceral sensory component equals, this component of CN9 innervates the baroreceptors of the carotid sinus and chima receptors of the carotid body. Peripheral and intracranial course. Sensory fibers arise from the carotid sinus and carotid body at the common carotid artery bifurcation, ascend in the sinus nerve and join the other components of CN9 at the inferior glossopharyngeal ganglion. The cell bodies of these neurons reside in the inferior glossopharyngeal ganglion. The central processes of these neurons enter the skull via the jugular foramen. Central course, visceral sensory component. Once inside the skull, the visceral sensory fibers enter the lateral medulla between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle and descend in the tractus solitarius to synapse in the caudal nucleus solitarius. From the nucleus solitarius, connections are made with several areas in the reticular formation and hypothalamus to mediate cardiovascular and respiratory reflex responses to changes in blood pressure, and serum concentrations of CO2 and O2. Equals overview of general sensory component equals, this component of CN9 carries general sensory information from the skin of the external ear, internal surface of the tympanic membrane, the walls of the upper pharynx, and the posterior one-third of the tongue. Peripheral course, sensory fibers from the skin of the external ear initially travel with the auricular branch of CNX, while those from the middle ear travel in the tympanic nerve as discussed above. General sensory information from the upper pharynx and posterior one-third of the tongue travel via the pharyngeal branches of CN9. These peripheral processes have cell or cell body in either the superior or inferior glossopharyngeal ganglion. Central course, general sensory component. The central processes of the general sensory neurons exit the glossopharyngeal ganglia and pass through the jugular foramen to enter the brainstem at the level of the medulla. Upon entering the medulla these fibers descend in the spinal trigeminal tract and synapse in the caudal spinal nucleus of the trigeminal. Central course, general sensory component, ascending secondary neurons originating from the spinal nucleus of CNV project to the contralateral ventral posterior medial nucleus of the thalamus via the anterolateral system.
tertiary neurons from the thalamus project via the posterior limb of the internal capsule to the sensory cortex of the postcentral gyrus. Clinical correlation. The general sensory fibers of CN9 mediate the afferent limb of the pharyngeal reflex in which touching the back of the pharynx stimulates the patient to gag. The efferent signal to the musculature of the pharynx is carried by the branchial motor fibers of the vagus nerve. Equals overview of special sensory component equals, the special sensory component of CN9 provides taste sensation from the posterior one-third of the tongue. Peripheral course, special sensory fibers from the posterior one-third of the tongue travel via the pharyngeal branches of CN9 to the inferior glossopharyngeal ganglion where their cell bodies reside. Central course, special sensory component. The central processes of these neurons exit the inferior ganglion and pass through the jugular foramen to enter the brainstem at the level of the rostral medulla between the olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Upon entering the medulla, these fibers ascend in the tractus solitarius and synapse in the gustatory part of nucleus solitarius. Taste fibers from CN7 and X also ascend and synapse here. Ascending secondary neurons originating in nucleus solitarius project bilaterally to the ventral posterior medial nuclei of the thalamus via the central tegmental tract. Tertiary neurons from the thalamus project via the posterior limb of the internal capsule to the inferior one third of the primary sensory cortex. Equals brainstem connections equals, the glossopharyngeal nerve is mostly sensory. The glossopharyngeal nerve also aids in tasting swallowing and salivary secretions. Its superior and inferior ganglia contain the cell bodies of pain fibers. It also projects into many different structures in the brainstem, solitary nucleus, taste from the posterior one-third of the tongue and information from carotid baroreceptors and carotid body chima receptors, spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, somatic sensory fibers from the middle ear, lateral nucleus of allocyneria, visceral pain, nucleus umbiguous, the lower motor neurons for the stylopharyngeus muscle, inferior salivatory nucleus, parasympathetic input to the parotid and mucous glands. Functions There are a number of functions of the glossopharyngeal nerve, it receives general sensory fibers from the tonsils, the pharynx, the middle ear and the posterior one-third of the tongue. It receives special sensory fibers from the posterior one-third of the tongue. It receives visceral sensory fibers from the carotid bodies, carotid sinus. It supplies parasympathetic fibers to the parotid gland via the otic ganglion. It supplies motor fibers to stylopharyngeus muscle, the only motor component of this cranial nerve. It contributes to the pharyngeal plexus. Clinical significance. Equals damage equals, the glossopharyngeal nerve if damaged can have several effects on the human body. These effects include loss of bitter and sour taste, and impaired swallowing. Equals examination equals, the clinical tests used to determine if the glossopharyngeal nerve has been damaged include testing the gag reflex of the mouth, asking the patient to swallow or cough, and evaluating for speech impediments. The clinician may also test the posterior one-third of the tongue with bitter and sour substances to evaluate for impairment of taste. The integrity of the glossopharyngeal nerve may be evaluated by testing the patient's general sensation and that of taste on the posterior third of the tongue. The gag reflex can also be used to evaluate the glossopharyngeal nerve, but also test the vagus nerve, as only the afferent fibers involved in the reflex are carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Additional images References Saladin, Anatomy and Physiology, The Unity of Form and Function 6th edition. External links, Higher 698 at Neuronames, MED edit Loyola Gross Anatomic 9 htm Medline Plus Image 9350, Cranium of the Anatomy Lesson by Wesley Norman, Notes on Glossopharyngeal Nerve.